Thank you for joining with us in the auditorium uh, this morning, those watching live stream. Those in the auditorium, let's take a songbook and turn to page 23. Page number 23, if you're able, would you stand with me? Page 23, there is power in the blood. Let's stand together as Brother Jared comes and leads us in singing, page number 23. Thank you and glad you're here uh, this morning and those watching live stream. And let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to meet together. We just ask that you bless the service from the uh, beginning to the end and that it would uh, just be a blessing to others and bring glory unto thee. So help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated and uh, take uh, those uh, sheets. You, it, this is not in the songbook, but uh, you have a sheet of paper that says, How Great Thou Art. Remain seated. And let's uh, sing these verses out as uh, Brother Jared comes and leads us in singing from the song sheets, How Great Thou Art. Yeah. 
Hey, thank you for uh, that good singing. Thank you for being here this morning. We do want to mention about our offering plate. I know I, know I don't need to mention that. Probably I'll stop uh, mentioning it. Uh, but anyway, it's on the organ in front of the church. And those who uh, give through the mail, live streaming, uh, or through uh, the YouTube uh, channel, thank you so much for your generosity and your help. Uh, for this local church to get out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every Saturday morning at 1030, we have church-wide soul winning. We invite you to come and join with us. Uh, we have a great time of fellowship, and most important, the gospel is getting out as we knock on doors and, and uh, look for people who are receptive and open and will listen to us, and then uh, we seek to give them the plan of salvation, how they can know for sure if they died, they'd go to heaven. And so if you'd like to uh, uh, join, join us on Saturday, 1030, we'd, we'd, uh, uh, we'd really appreciate that. And... Uh, just keep that in mind. We will be live streaming tonight at seven o'clock, Lord willing, uh, Wednesday night, seven o'clock also. Before we look into God's word this morning, please take your songbooks, those in the auditorium, and turn to page 410, 410, Faith is the Victory. And let's stand together, those in the auditorium, and Brother Jared's going to come lead us in singing, Faith is the Victory. Thank you. 
And remain standing. I'm going to read from uh, the Gospel of John this morning, just two verses. John chapter 7, verses 45 and 46. The Bible says, Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful for the scriptures, and now Holy Spirit, take the word and minister to each and every heart that's uh, listening and watching. Fill me with thy spirit, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The officers, uh, when asked, why did you not bring Jesus? We sent you to bring him. Why didn't you bring him to us? The Bible says in John 7, verse 46, never man spake like this man. Never man spake like this man. Now, Jesus said a, a lot of things. Jesus said many, many things. We have the Gospels, which uh, record uh, many of his words. And as you read the words of Jesus, you will find that Jesus made extreme statements. I mean statements that no one ever dared to make. He made extreme statements. For instance, in John chapter 8, verse number 12, Jesus declared himself to be the light of the world. Jesus said in John 10, Verse number nine, I am the door. He said in John 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. These are extreme statements. Then who but Jesus could say as he did in John chapter eight, verse 29, I do always those things that please him, talking about his heavenly Father. Now, most of us would agree that Jesus what is what we would call extreme. He was very extreme. Uh, but mention the word extreme. Many people immediately think of some fanatic, some radical fanatic bearing a torch 
uh, and burning uh, down churches. We're not talking about that type of, uh, of uh, extremist. According to the dictionary, the word extreme means farthest from the ordinary. It means exceedingly great. It means going to the utmost heights or the highest degree. It also means beyond the average or the ordinary. That's what the word extreme means uh, as we uh, look at it uh, in the dictionary. So according to the dictionary and according to God's word and according to those who knew Jesus Christ personally, even as he walked this earth, uh, he was truly the great extremist. Uh, when you talk about extreme, he was greatly extreme. Jesus truly is, according to the dictionary's definition, farthest from the ordinary. Who but Jesus can truly be called exceedingly great? We're talking about the Son of God. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Who but Jesus went to utmost heights voluntarily in order to sacrifice himself for an ungodly world? Who more than Jesus is beyond the average? Who more than Jesus is beyond the ordinary? Without any doubt, Jesus Christ, while he walked here on earth, was truly a great extremist. You say, how? I mentioned a few ways. Number one, Jesus certainly was uh, extreme in the things he said. He said things that, that uh, are out of the ordinary. Again, that no human being would ever dare to say. Declaring his deity, that he was God in the flesh. Jesus said in John 8, verse number 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then Jesus said in John 14, verse 9, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. That's a pretty extreme statement. Jesus said in John 10, verse number 30, I and my Father are one. Jesus Christ is no less God than God the Father is God. When he gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. We're talking about the extreme statements that the Son of God made. No human being, again, would dare even make any statements close to that. Jesus said in John 10, verse number 18, no man taketh it, he's talking about his life now, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. In the garden, on trial before those sneering soldiers, he said in Matthew 26, verse number 53, thinketh thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. And then in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, when the Pharisees rebuked the disciples for crying out, Hosanna, Jesus answered and said unto them in Luke 19, verse 40, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Jesus was extreme in the statements he made. These are extreme, st extreme statements which I read from the scriptures. Again, no other man would ever dare to make those statements. Jesus truly is farthest from the ordinary. Jesus truly is exceedingly great. Jesus is everything that the word extreme rightly describes. And the religious crowd hated him. Why? Because he was an extremist. 
he challenged their religious traditions. To the religious politicians of his day, Jesus said in John 8, 44, ye are of your father, the devil. When the disciples were in danger of being influenced by false doctrine, Jesus didn't hesitate to warn in Mark 8, verse 15, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And likewise, Jesus Christ, the great extremist, would not be popular with most denominational leaders today. Uh, he is the one that upset the apple cart, so to speak. And people don't like that. People want to go on in their tradition, not only in religion, but in politics. When someone comes uh, along and, and starts throwing monkey wrenches into the system, people get annoyed. They, they start uh, saying things that are not true, trying to defend their own uh, false and liberal positions. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. They were not happy with Jesus while he walked the earth. I'm talking now again about the religious leaders and the politicians. He always gave the devil a fit also. When Satan got near to one of his disciples, Jesus cried out in Matthew 16, verse 23, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus Christ, he was truly the great extremist while well, he walked here on earth. He upset the prevailing notions of men in his everyday and daily speech. To men seeking applause, he said in Luke 6, verse 26, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. To men bent on making money, he declared in Luke 12, verse number 15, Beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Then to those who were prideful, he said in Matthew 19, verse 14, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. To men who believed in gaining salvation through their good works. Jesus said in John 6, 29, this is the work of God that ye believe in him whom he hath sent. To the men seeking a, a carnal pleasure, he said in John 13, 17, if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. To those priding themselves in their own ability, Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, without me, ye can do nothing. Jesus was the great extremist. He said extreme things. And then, not only did Jesus say extreme things, but we know that he did extreme things. Walking on the water, I'd say that's a pretty extreme thing. Entering the graveyard and crying out at the tomb of a departed friend. He said, Lazarus, come forth. That was an extreme thing, especially when Lazarus walked out of that tomb that day. Healing on the Sabbath day, incurring the wrath of the religious leaders that was an extreme thing. He didn't care what they thought. He didn't care what they said. In fact, he didn't care what they did. Taking clay and spittle, as he did in John 9, verse 6, he anointed the eyes of a man born blind. That was an extreme thing. And the man's eyes were opened, declaring his second coming to be the only cure for a sin-drenched world was and is now an extreme thing. You tell people that man will never usher in a utopia, 
the only time there's going to be peace on this earth is when the Son of God comes and set, sets his feet down on the uh, Mount of Olives and sets up his kingdom. They don't believe that. They think that's fairy tales. To them, it's a, an extreme thing. And to the, the, those in Jesus' day, as he spoke those words, those were words that were extreme to these people. I'm saying that Jesus Christ was the great extremist. He said extreme things. He did extreme things. Remember again what the dictionary defines extreme as. It means the farthest from the ordinary. It means going to the utmost length and height. I say unto you that first Jesus Christ was an extremist about the Bible. He said in Matthew 5, 18, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus was an extremist when it comes to the word of God. He declared the Bible to be the final criterion when he answered the theological hypocrites of his day by saying in Matthew 22, verse 29, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. He said in John chapter 10, verse 35, the scripture cannot be broken. Jesus uttered an extreme thing when he said in John 5, verse 39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus uttered an extreme thing when he constantly insisted that the Bible, as in Luke 24, 27, beginning at Moses, the Bible says, and all the prophets contained the things concerning himself. That was extreme. Jesus was extreme in the fact that he believed the Bible. He believed God's word. He believed the prophets. He believed the law. He believed the Psalms. Jesus was an extremist when it comes to the Bible. And all saved people, may I say this morning, are responsible to believe God's book that Jesus Christ declared as true. In 1 John 5, verse 10, the Bible says, He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. So wise people will be wise enough to believe the infallible and, inerr and unerring scriptures, the word of God. The world is full of hungry and broken hearts because people have sidestepped the message of the wonderful book, the Bible, God's Word. We need to turn back to it. That's our only hope. Therefore, we must get with it. And according to James 1, verse 21, receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to save your souls. I'm saying this morning that Jesus was the great extremist. He said extreme things. He did extreme things. Then Jesus was an extremist, not only about the Bible, but he was an extremist about consecration. You say, what do you mean by consecration? Consecration simply means to set apart as holy. Jesus never considered consecration an optional. To the covetous young man, who realized that he still sadly lacked the greatest wealth of all, Jesus said to him in Matthew 19, verse 21, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. To those who would waver about discipleship, when their relatives began to object. He said in Matthew 10, verse 37, 
he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In other words, Christ should come first. He should come before relatives. He should come before family reunions. He should come before everything that most people and even professing Christians put before Christ and they try to justify their actions. But before God, their actions show their true faith because our faith is seen in what we do and how we live. You see, people can't see your heart or mine, but they can certainly see our actions. To those half-hearted disciples who are more excited about a farewell party at home than serving the Savior, Jesus was not hesitant to say to them in Luke 9, verse 62, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus pulled no punches when he said in Matthew 12, verse 30, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. I'm saying Jesus was the great extremist. He was extreme when it came to the word of God. He was extreme when it came to consecration. What a rebuke to the sickly anemic discipleship of our day when Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus was an extremist when it came to the word of God. Jesus was an extremist when it came to consecration. And then Jesus Christ was an extremist when it came to prayer. Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, men ought always to pray and not to faint. In such an agony of prayer was he in Gethsemane's garden that according to Luke 22, verse 44, his sweat was as if it were great drops of blood. He made no bones about it in Matthew 21, verse 22, when he said, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. When it came to prayer, Jesus was the great extremist. Jesus was so extreme when it came to prayer that he said in Mark 11, 23 and 24, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Jesus Christ was an extremist when it came to prayer. He declared in Mark 9, verse 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. But according to James chapter 4, verse 2, surely we have not because we ask not. And so may we emulate Jesus' prayer life remembering that Jesus prayed earnestly. He prayed often. He fasted and prayed. He concentrated on prayer and he expected answers to his prayer and he got them. Jesus was an extremist about the Bible. He was an extremist about consecration. He was an extremist about prayer and then Jesus Christ was an extremist regarding sin and purity, a message that our people in 2020 desperately need, 
I'm saying that Jesus was an extremist when it came to sin and purity. He never taught that we should continue in sin, that grace may abound. With the Apostle Paul, he could have cried, God forbid. Jesus declared that one's righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders of his day, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hear his extreme commandment given in Matthew 5:48. Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And how extreme this sin-sick generation considers Christ when he says in Matthew 5, verse 28, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already with her in his heart. How extreme. And yet today, we need to hear those words, but not just be hearers of the word, we need to heed the words of God. And then maybe we'll see lives changed. Maybe we'll see people blessed. Maybe we'll see the nations of the world be blessed. Then Jesus declared it impossible for a man to serve two masters. One must either serve sin or serve righteousness according to God. Jesus said in John 8 verse 34, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. He never taught that one should do evil that good may come. He never taught that one should sow his wild oats while he was young with assurance that everything would come out all right at the end. That's not what Proverbs 22, 6 means. How many people say, well, you know, we taught him, now he went his way. But according to Proverbs 22, 6, uh, that uh, he will come back. That's not what the Bible teaches, friend. I taught on that verse uh, n uh, not that long ago. Maybe it needs to be taught once again. God inspired the Apostle Paul to write in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. I'm saying that Jesus was the great extremist when it came to regarding sin and purity. And then Jesus was an extremist in his description of the human heart, and people don't want to hear that today. It was to the religious Pharisees that Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He further explored the recesses of man's heart in Matthew 15, verse 19, where he describes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. And he says, all these things come from the heart and they defile the man. The Bible says in John 2 verse 25 that Jesus needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man. What an extreme position Jesus took regarding the human heart when he insisted in John 3 verse 7 that a man must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. I'm saying that Jesus was an extremist. He was an extremist in his description of the human heart. And then may I say that Jesus was an extremist when it came to salvation. Again, in John 3, verse 7, Jesus said that a man must be born again. In Acts 4, verse 12, the scripture says, There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus also said in Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23, 
that many will stand at the judgment bar of God pleading, Lord, Lord, pleading their works, pleading their preaching, pleading their profession, only to be told, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Jesus taught that it was impossible for one to reach heaven without the experience he spoke of as being converted, as being born again, as being saved, all three referring to the same experience. Jesus was an extremist in that he declared that there was no other way into heaven when he said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I once read some time ago that in the state of California, over 40 criminals were sentenced to death, with none of them knowing the date of their execution. They were not told. They were left there to just think about it. With a fearful thing, no doubt, not knowing that you're going to die, but you don't know when. For those criminals, it must have been a, a terrible thing, waiting, wondering, expecting to die, but not knowing when that time would come. But isn't that the state of every man, woman, and young person outside of Jesus Christ? Hebrews 9, verse 27, the Bible says, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, all waiting, not knowing when the wages of sin will have to be paid up. That's why Proverbs 27, verse 1 warns, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I'm just saying to those who are still unsaved, you're not 100% sure if you died you'd go to heaven. I'm saying to you, believe Jesus Christ today, the great extremist. Believe what he says, then believe on him as your own personal savior and be assured that when that time comes, he'll take you to be with him for all eternity. Then when it comes to God's children, we're to be like Jesus and we're to be like him in his extremism as to our devotion and service to Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if someone said, and we know what they mean, but it's really a compliment. Wouldn't it be wonderful to hear someone say, you're just a Jesus freak. You're just a fanatic. You're radical. You're an extremist. Thank you. Let's be extreme, God's people, in our Bible reading. How about that? Let's be extreme in our prayer lives. Let's be extreme when it comes to living pure and holy lives. Let's be extreme in our giving. Let's be extreme in our church attendance and faithfulness. And let's be extreme in our getting out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray for those who are not saved yet, never been converted, never been born again. God, please convict their hearts and may they open the door of their heart and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, as the only one they're depending on to be forgiven and go to heaven. And then those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ, 
let us never be ashamed of our Savior and the Word of God. And may we be extremists when it comes to our devotion and service to our Commander-in-Chief, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the invitation. Maybe decisions, dear God, need to be made. If they do, bless those individuals and give them the grace to follow through what you're speaking to our hearts about. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Please turn with me in your songbook to page 316. Let's stand together. I have decided to follow Jesus. If you need to come to the altar, maybe God spoke to your heart about something that you need to come and talk to him about. Let God have his way this morning. I have decided to follow Jesus.